Again, welcome to CS101, Introduction to Programming Using Python. This lab was cover chapter two of our course textbook, which is Input, Process, and Output. Our main objective is solving three problems using the Python programming language. And it will, we will focus on input, and how the user can get, get an input into our Python program. Our processing will be arithmetic operations as we cover again the lectures. Then we are going to print out the results. Our input, we are going to use the input function to ask the user to enter the input using a keyboard. So our first problem is to calculate the total purchase. And the second problem will be to find the distance travel. And the third problem will be calculate the cell stars. Again, this material is covered chapter two of our course textbook. So we are not going to cover loops or selection statement yet. So let's look at our first problem. A customer in a store is purchasing five items. Here they say we should write a program that asks for the price of each item, then display the subtotal of the sale, then the amount of sale stars. The amount of sale stars will be 7% of the subtotal. Then the total amount will be the subtotal of the sale plus the amount of sale stars. So let's look at the code here. So we have a comment here saying that we need variables to hold the prices of each item, also the subtotal, and then the total. So the five items, we use the variable item one, item two, item three, item four, and item five. We want to make sure that there's no any garbage or any data, because anytime we have a, a memory, the operating system uh, randomly allocate a memory space. So it may allocate a memory space whereby there's some data there that has been used before. So we make sure that we initialize all the five variables to zero, uh, which means we are deleting everything from the variables. Then we have the subtotal, which will be the total of the five items. Then we need to find the task. Then the final total will be the subtotal plus the task. So these are the variables we need. Eight variables, five for the input, the price amount. Then one variable to find the subtotal, one variable to find the task, and one variable to find the total. So next, we are going to ask the user to enter the five prices of the items. We also declare a constant variable here named task rate. And we know from the question, our task is 7%, which is the same as 0 0.07. So here we get the price of each item. And we are using the input function and telling the user to enter the price of item one up to item five. Now here we are using the float because when we use an input function, the data that we get will be in strings. And since we are going to perform arithmetic operations, we cannot use the data type string. So either we use float or int. Float means we have a decimal values. So the price can be maybe $20.50, which will be 20.50. So all the five prices, we convert the data or the price to float because we are going to use it for arithmetic operation, which will be the next step. So here we are going to find the subtotal the subtotal will be the item one plus item two plus item three plus item four plus item five. Now we need to find this, the sales task. So the sales task will be the subtotal times the task rate, which is 0 0.07. Then after that, we are going to find the total amount of the whole sale. So the total will be the subtotal plus the task. So we finish with our operation, operations. Next, we are going to print our values. So here we say the subtotal uh, will be, we are using a format function here. And here we are formatted to two decimal places. So 0.2F means the data type is float. 
And point two means two decimal places. As we know, the cent, for example, $20.47, which means $20.47. The same thing for the cell stars. We use the format function and we convert it to make sure it's only two decimal places. Then the total, so the same thing, we use the format function converted to two decimal places. So that will be the conclusion of our first uh, problem. So in this problem, we were asked to enter five items of a price, price items. Then we find the subtotal, then we find the task, and the task will be 7% of the subtotal. And the total amount will be the subtotal plus the task. Then we print the values. And then we format the values using the format function. We don't want to have more than two decimal places because this is currency. So the cent, the maximum we can go is two decimal places. Now let's look at our second problem. Here they say we should assume that there are no accidents or delays. And the distance that a car travels down the interstate can be calculated with the following formula. So distance equal to speed times time. Yeah, they say we should write a program where the condition given here is that a car is travel at 70 miles per hour. We should write the program to display the following. The distance the car will travel in six hours. The distance the car will travel in 10 hours. And also the distance the car will travel in 15 hours. Now to find the distance is the speed times the time. So we know the speed is 70 miles per hour. And the time will be six. So the distance the car will travel in six hours will be 70 times six. Then for 10 hours, it will be 70 times 10. For 15 hours, it will be 70 times 15. So now let's look at the Python code. So here we are going to find three values. So we need to store the result in a variable. Or we can even write the formula inside the print function. Then in this case, we don't need to store the result, but rather calculate it and display the result using the print function. Here we decided to have three variables. The first will be distance for six hours. The second is distance 10 hours, distance 15 hours. Now, again, we initialize all the three variables to 0, 0.0. Make sure there's no data in the three variables. Now, we know the speed that the car is traveling is 70 miles per hour. So we declare it as a constant variable, speed equal to 70. Now, we need to calculate the distance the car will travel in six. So in six hours, it will be the speed times six. Because we know distance equal to speed times time. Uh, for 10 hours, it will be speed times 10. Uh, for 15 hours, it will be speed times 15. And the last, we are going to display our result or print the result. So here we say the car will travel the following distances. If it's six hours, whatever answer we get for the distance, six hours will be printed. And here we are going to have a, a sentence saying that the distance six hours is miles in six hours. Distance 10 hours is miles in 10 hours. Distance 15 hours is miles in 15 hours. Now you can see that we are printing the content of the variables because we don't have a double quotation around it. If we have a double quotation around distance six hours, then we are going to print distance six hours as a string. Uh, but when we don't have no quotation, double quotation run it, it means again, we are printing the content. So that will be the conclusion for our second problem. Now let's go through our last problem, which is the cell stars. Here they say we should write a program that will ask the user to enter the amount of a purchase. The program should then compute the state and also accounting cell stars. Here, assuming that the state cell stars is 5% and also the counting cell stars is 2.5%. The 
the program should display the amount of the purchase, the state sales tax, the county sales tax, the total sales tax, and also the total of the sale, which will be the sum of the amount of purchase plus the total sales tax. So we are going to use 0 0.025 to represent the 2.5% and also 0 0.05 to represent the 5%. So here we need a variable to keep the purchase and the item we purchase. We have a variable for the state tax. We know the state tax will be 5% of the purchase amount and the counting tax will be 2.5% of the purchase amount. Then we also want to find the total tax. So the total tax will be the state tax plus the counting tax. Then the total sale will be the total tax plus the purchase. So here we declare constant value since the, the tax percentage are constant value. We use the constant variable here. We initialize the state tax to 0 0.05 and also the counting tax rate to 0 0.025. So next we're going to ask the user to enter the amount of the purchase. So we use the input function again, and we say enter the amount of the purchase. We convert the input into float and we assign it to a variable named purchase. Then we need to calculate the state sell stats now since we know the amount of purchase. So the state Task will be the purchase amount times the state, the state tax rate. <coughs> also, the counting sales tax will be the purchase amount times the counting tax rate. Then we need to find the total tax. Now, the total tax will be the state tax plus the counting tax. Then we can calculate the total amount of the sales, which will be again the purchase plus the total tax. Now we finish with our operations. Next, we are going to print our results. So first we print the amount purchase, and whatever the amount is, we format it to two decimal places. Then we also find, print the sales tax, or sorry, the state tax, and also the counting tax for the purchase, the sales. And also we print the total task, which is the total task variable here, the content will be printed. Again, we are using the format function. Now the format function always takes two arguments, the content that you want to print and also the format type. So here I want to print the content of total task, which is state task plus the counting task then I want to format it to two decimal places. Same thing for the total sales. We already calculated the total sales to be purchase plus total tax. So we just use the format function, format it to two decimal places and then print it. So all this program again cover chapter two of our course textbook, get input, do your process and then print your result, which will be in the output. So again, see you in the next lectures and thank you.